Hello, my name is Craig Mason from MIPIM. This is a new series called Property Influencers, where we talk to some of the top people in the real estate and property market. Hello, my name is Craig Mason from MIPIM. This is Property Influencers. We're here talking with Manfred Vilschnig, who is the a uh, member of the executive board of Immo Finance, which is one of the leading uh, European real estate and property management companies. Tell us a bit about your company briefly and, and the types of activities that you're involved in uh, across Europe. Um, yes, of course. Immo Finance is um, a stock-listed company, um, an Austrian company based in Vienna. Uh, we are a real estate investor and developer, and we are focused on uh, do Western European markets, uh, that's Germany and Austria, and um, the six uh, core markets in Central and Eastern Europe and in CIS are uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania and Russia, and talking about Russia, we are always talking about Moscow. If you could rethink the, the real estate industry and the property industry and do things differently, uh, what would you start with? I, I would say um, what, what has changed significantly is the availability of money, of course. Um, so that's, of course, uh, uh, it, it can be a huge problem. And the second thing is uh, the factor of time. Everything we, uh, we've started takes much longer than originally expected. Things changed, of course, because of the financial crisis. Uh, we had to focus uh, on our strength and uh, uh, that's why we had to reorganize almost everything. We had an internal crisis in the company. At the end of 2008, uh, the whole management left, uh, so there is a new management board in place. We have hired last year 120 people in, in the last 18 months, and we've lost 70, so that was a, a huge uh, change in the, in, the, in the staff and the people working for the company. Just if you can talk about the, the challenges that you faced as a, as a leader in, in mm -hmm. you know, harnessing the the potential of your people to, because I, I think particularly in, in companies that go through some upheaval, the, the most difficult part is energizing the people that are left. So just talk mm -hmm. about, talk a bit about the process that you went through. Um, um, the, um, the, the people uh, working for our company in the past were uh, joking, but uh, they were called cowboys because they had the pockets full of money and they were sent out to acquire assets. So that, that was their job and they did it really great. So they, they bought a lot and I would say 80% good stuff, the rest um, we, we could talk about it. Um, um, when the crisis came, uh, cowboys were no longer uh, the, the right people. So because we were looking for uh, solid asset managers, well experienced um, uh, people, um, uh, and they unfortunately were not available uh, in the quality and in the number we needed them. So um, uh, we, we had really uh, to work on our, on our um, moral, I would say, on, on, the, on the thinking of, of the people uh, to make them clear that it's not only done as soon as you've bought the property, but you have to work on the property. To have, you have to raise the value, you have to prepare it for, for a sale. Because in the past, ne no, no one thought about selling anything. It was just an idea of getting bigger, 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 and uh, raising money from the capital markets. Um, so um, uh, that was really a rethinking and reorganizing. What, what's the process you go through to try and to manage the risk? Um, when we uh, when I joined the company, there were, there were no tools to, to deal with the risk because we didn't have any database. So we didn't even know what we were owning, uh, and uh, we didn't know anything about our tenants, about um, uh, expiries of leases, nothing. So, uh, because they were really just buying, and whenever I wanted to, to hear anything about one of our assets, I had to ask, uh, uh, I had to go to the property manager. So we di we didn't have any um, any structure in, in in our portfolio, and uh, that means very very high risk, of course. Uh, we didn't have a transaction team, uh, a solid uh, transaction team, but, but everyone was somehow doing transactions, selling, buying. Uh, um, we, we set up a, 
at, at, at transaction team, uh, and they are really doing everything now. They they are they are uh, communicating with all the interested parties, and it, it's it's totally clear that no figures, no numbers uh, are un spread over the markets because they they can care of that. That's minimizing risk. If you could reimagine the way a city looks, and and particularly in the residential and, and city areas, I mean, what what do you think are the are the big themes or trends that are going to to take shape, and what would you like to see uh, take shape over the future? Um, um, talking about Western Europe, um, I would say um, that um, we had uh, some more time to develop the cities uh, as we think that it's good for the people living there. So, uh, because there are so many groups influencing the decision makers um, I think we, we have what the people want to have. So we have uh, city and nice city centers, we have uh, mixed use buildings uh, surrounding um, in, in the surroundings, we have uh, some shopping center in the outer skirts, we have high street retail. So it's I, I, I would say pretty, pretty that what people want to have. In Central and Eastern Europe um, um, the decisions were made by the government or by the local administrations and the cities were, some of them were uh, really not good for living. Uh, for example, talking about Bucharest, um, they, they the, the, the government there destroyed the old city uh, almost totally. So we are working on a reorganization of, 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 the, of, the, of, the, of those cities. Um, we help them because uh, Western European American money helps, of course, to transfer uh, the situation there into into a new way of of of, uh, of living. Uh, final question: you, You're here at MIPIM. Uh, how how is this event? How does this event give value to your company? Um, I've been here now for for several years, um, and, and I like MIPIM very much. And um, you you can imagine that brings a lot of value. There is no chance to meet them somewhere in in in, in their countries in in their offices. You can't do it even within one year. Uh, that would take much longer, would cost much more. So I think uh, MIPIM is really a great opportunity to concentrate on, on your business and to meet the people you want to meet. Mm. Okay, well thank you very much for your time. We appreciate okay. that and we hope you have a, a good rest of the few days here at MIPIM. Thank you.